And we've seen over the last, well, let's just say two generations, a very rapid migration of more and more intimate aspects of life into the economy. But, but are we better off when most cooking is done in supermarket delis and restaurants instead of in the kitchen? Are we better off when children are being supervised all day instead of playing pickup games and running around the neighborhood playing hopscotch and jacks and cops and robbers and tag? Are we better off then? Are we better off when you pay contractors to do all of your yard work rather than doing it yourself or neighbors helping neighbors do it outside the money economy. So a lot of economic growth, it doesn't mean that more is being done necessarily. It means that it is part of a money transaction instead of a gift economy. Now the I'm not sure how much I want to go into economic theory here, but the justification for it is that it's much more efficient for you know, a few daycare center workers to take care of 30 kids than for every mom to do it themselves. Therefore, the and it's more efficient for the mom to you know do her specialized function in the economy so that that then she'll have more leisure time because the work of child caring is being done more efficiently. Well that leaves out all of the things that cannot be contained in efficiency, which is everything qualitative. Like, yeah, you can, it is maybe more efficient for a few daycare workers to change all the diapers and to, to, you know, feed the children and do all these, these things that you can quantify, but can you pay them to actually love the children? Can you buy that? To actually be patient, actually take the time, actually connect authentically to them, to actually care. No. And that's the kind of thing that we lose in the world of economic growth. We lose the things that actually make life precious, that make it intimate. When you outsource intimate functions like cooking and taking care of children um, to strangers, and I would add to that singing together. Like that's another thing that's become a paid service or a product. Whereas if you spend time in less developed parts of the world, you notice people sing a lot more. We used to make our own songs. Even in, you know, Ireland, if you go especially to the more rural parts in the pubs, what do people do? They sing. We used to sing on the school bus, actually but now everybody's on their device. So, so this is what, econ- well, you have to understand what economic growth is. Now we have an, an economy that only works when there is economic growth, which is why I you know, spent some t- part of my life writing about economics. Um, I wrote a book called Sacred Economics uh, that, that asks, okay, what is it about our money system that makes it only function in a context of growth, which means more and more of life entering the realm of services, more and more of nature entering the realm of commodities and products. Like that doesn't make us better off. You know, we are not happier or healthier as a society than we were 50 years ago or 70 years ago when per capita GDP was a third of what it is today. Are we three times happier? No. Economic growth does not deliver the the promise that is encoded in the word goods. More and more goods, but that's not more and more good.